Right. So my name is Brian Coward. I am the EDM product manager for Makino. Uh, this presentation here today that we're going to be talking about this morning uh, has to do with uh, wire EDM maintenance. So we're going to talk about the operational impact of maintenance for wire EDM. So what are we going to talk about? Um, we're going to talk about what happens when you neglect maintenance for wire EDM and why is it a necessary evil. Um, I hear this all the time, don't have time, don't have time to do the maintenance. Need to do the maintenance. Uh, we'll talk about specifically uh, what are the components that need to be cleaned, uh, indexed or replaced, and then of course what components are daily, weekly, monthly on the maintenance schedule. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about how can we reduce uh, wire EDM maintenance costs and we'll go over some specific examples that Makino has done in their engineering to reduce those costs. So why, why do we need to do so much maintenance? Well, Wire EDM is a, a very complex machine in comparison to other machine tools. So it's an electrical machine, but it's also a mechanical machine. So mechanical components are your drives. It's going to apply the tension the tension to the wire as you're machining. So all of those rollers have to work together to maintain a constant tension to optimize your machining. And then of course the electrical components is what does the actual machining, right? The discharge. Um, all of these components will wear um, and break down and they do require proper intervals of maintenance. So what are some of the symptoms of poor wire EDM maintenance? What's going to happen if I do not do my maintenance? Well, I can get multiple wire breaks, right? So if I don't index my energizers, I'm going to start getting wire breaks. Very common thing. I know it seems like a simple item, but we get that call a lot. I keep getting wire breaks, wire breaks, wire breaks. Well, when's the last time you index your energizers? Oh, I don't know. Well, index your energizers and your wire breaks are going to go away. Um, same thing. That results in slow cutting speeds. So maybe I'm using a power setting that's not enough power where it's going to cause a wire break, but if my energizers are worn, it's going to, the machine is going to cut slow. Um, worn energizers can also affect your accuracy, as well as bad rollers, bad tensioning, things like that. Um, and probably the biggest thing with maintenance is the automatic wire threader. So if you do not maintain your machine properly, it will not auto wire thread. The whole point for a wire EDM is to get unmanned machine time because it is not the most exciting process in the shop to watch, right? So you want it to be unattended. So all of these things, combined issues, will rob you of productivity in your shop. Again, the whole point for wire EDM is unattended machine time. So to avoid those surprises, which really aren't surprises because you're supposed to do your maintenance. <laughs> um, you need to be proactive in doing preventative maintenance. And that maintenance, maintenance should be done at set intervals before the machine encounters an issue. So other machine tools in your shop, you really don't do anything to them until there's an issue, right? You, you fix a mill when it starts, it's not working. Um, Wire EDM is different. You have to do this maintenance. You have to be proactive on all of these items. There's many, many more items that you have to do in a maintenance, from a maintenance perspective, than there is on a mill or even a sinker EDM. You know, those are much lower maintenance machines than a wire EDM because a wire EDM, if you really think about it mechanically, it has a lot of small, little, delicate parts, and you're taking those parts and you're submerging them in dirty water. That's not a good thing. You're going to have to do maintenance to keep it running. So the type and interval of that maintenance can vary uh, from machine make and model, um, but many of them are common, right? So your wire spool, most obvious, right? That's your cutting tool. You need to replace that spool. But you also need to be proactive at replacing that spool. Um, your threading unit, like I said, is the biggest one. Energizers uh, or contacts, your power feeders, uh, you have to do that or the machine's just not going to burn. 
and then your wire guides as well. You need to clean your wire guides on a um, set interval to get best performance. Same with the rollers. Uh, wire can be dirty and depending on the wire that you use, the amount of dirt on the wire, the cleanliness of the wire varies. Um, you can use a less clean wire. It just means you're going to have to do more maintenance to your rollers and your guides and things like that. Uh, filters, obviously, and your resin to maintain the conductivity of the uh, water itself. Another one that people really overlook is just the general cleaning of the work tank area. You know, you know, I'll go into many, many shops and you look at the work tank and it is straight up black, full of dirt. Really doesn't take that much to keep that thing clean. And if you keep it clean, the machine is going to perform much better. So your wire spool. Obviously it's required because that's your cutting tool and you can't reuse it, which is a question I get all the time from people who don't know wire EDM. Um, but you need to be proactive about that. I mean, it's, it's a you know pretty obvious thing that you need to change it, uh, but you need to keep an eye on it because again, unmanned machine time is the whole purpose of the wire EDM. So if I'm setting up a job, not paying attention to my wire spool, Set up a job is going to run for 10 hours, but I've only got two hours worth of wire left on my spool. I leave for the night. Well, I just wasted eight hours of productivity, right? So being proactive and tracking the wire usage of each spool is very important to be more productive. And there's tools that you can do that with our control and other machines as well. Uh, another one is the wire bin, the collection bin. Uh, it's one of those things that we overlook when we're in the shop. We don't think about walking around the back and taking a look at the, the bin. If you've run a wire machine, I'm sure you've done it, because I've done it multiple times, not paid attention, started the machine left, come back, have a big rat's nest in the back because I didn't empty the bin because it just piled up over top of my rollers, and now I got a mess in the morning, lost all my productivity. So again, it's just being proactive. Uh, the threader maintenance. Again, I want to emphasize, to me, this is the most important piece of maintenance that people overlook because that is really the heart of a wire EDM to make it productive and um, get automated, unattended machining. Um, it performs the, the automatic threading. If you don't do it, you're going to have to manually thread. Nobody likes to manually thread a wire. It's a pain in the butt. Um, and the maintenance is really not that difficult when you break it down. It's just simple uh, cleaning of a couple items and you're good to go. Uh, the energizer plates, uh, there's two contacts. That's what delivers power, upper and lower head. It's true on every machine. Uh, they wear over time, obviously, and they need to be replaced or indexed. Um, generally, the, the standard energizer um, for a Makino machine is going to last anywhere between 600 to 100 hours. Um, I'll show a little bit later that there is an alternative to the standard or a long life energizer that we offer, but that's the standard energizer. And that depends on how much roughing you're doing versus finish cutting and things like that. Uh, wire guide maintenance. So obviously this is what makes the machine accurate, right? It's what's going to hold your wire uh, to the position that you need it to be in. So guides will get dirty because you've got dirty water all over them, right? Even though you're flushing clean water, you're going to get dirt and debris. It's going to get clogged up. Most common type of guides in the industry are round guides, uh, which we offer as well. Uh, but we do also offer the V-guide. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between those a little bit later. Um, so, But generally, you're going to have to remove those guides and clean them uh, to get the dirt and debris because that round guide acts like a funnel and all that dirt's going to go down in there so um, all of these things play together right so that's why changing your filters is important if i don't change my filter i use a really high micron filter uh, 10 or 15 micron filter i'm going to have more dirt and debris in my reservoir which means that dirt and debris is going to go down into my round guide which is going to clog it faster and then i'm going to have to clean it more often again i can do that i'm just going to have to clean it more often and just be aware Normally, after you clean your guide, you're going to have to do um, another alignment calibration. This is typical on any machine. Um, Makino is a little unique, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. 
So your roller maintenance. So there's several rollers on any machine. Um, some have more, some have less. It depends on the design of the wire drive system. Um, and they, they will become dirty and they require cleaning or else you'll get slippage. Uh, the three most important rollers would be the tension roller. That's what's going to apply the tension to the, to the wire. Uh, if you have faulty tensioning on your machine, it will cause all kinds of problems. You'll get wire breaks, phantom wire breaks, um, slippage of the actual wire itself can cause lines in the finish of your part, so the tension roller is very critical. And then in the lower head, we call it a K roller, but it's a 90 degree pivot roller. So unless you have a horizontal wire machine, like which, which we actually have one, that wire has to make that 90 degree turn at the bottom because it needs to get to the back of the machine. So that's a very critical roller because the wire runs on that lower roller before it gets back to the last rollers that are important, which are the pinch rollers, which is gonna pull it into the back, right? The lower roller is a big part of false wire breaks, uh, lines in your parts, things like that. Why would that be? The lower roller has bearings in it. Now they're sealed bearings, but over time those bearings are gonna, that bearing is gonna wear out, right? And if that bearing wears out, you're gonna get an uneven rotation in that roller and that wire's running on it and it's trying to make that 90 degree turn and it's gonna cause you all kinds of issues. Um, generally speaking, that, that bearing you might replace every three years or so. It just depends on how much machining you're doing. You know, one to three years, I would say. Um, I wouldn't buy the bearing from us. I'll just tell you that right now. It's going to be very expensive from Makino, and it's just a bearing. So you can find it anywhere. Um, filter maintenance. Um, obviously, the main filters is what cleans the water and removes the debris that you're creating during the machining. Um, typically, the range that you're going to see people use is going to be three to three to ten micron. Uh, the standard uh, filter that we use for Makino is going to be three to five micron. That's the standard that comes with the machine. Um, there's an additional filter. We'll just talk about that a little bit later. It has to do with the uh, jet filter. Uh, there's different filter types. There's inside-out filtration, which is what we use on the Makino. There's outside-in filtration. There's paper media, synthetic media, and all these things play into the life that you're going to get out of those filters, right? And we have people here that can talk a whole lot more about filters than me. I know how to change them. Uh, resin. Obviously, this is what controls the conductivity level of the water. Um, it could be virgin or regenerated. Most people will use regenerated after uh, they get the machine because it's cheaper. Um, we, we prefer the tank system. You know, SST has an exchange system with the tanks. Um, I think it's the best system. There are socks that you can use. There's bulk resin. That's kind of the old school way of doing it. Uh, that's a mess. Um, I can speak from experience. If you drop that on the floor and you step on it, it looks like a cartoon when you fall down because uh, little beads are everywhere. Um, reservoir, um, you know, you also need to maintain the level of the water. Now that may seem like a pretty obvious one, uh, but I want to tell you a quick story about a customer I was at. Kept telling me, machine won't pick up accurate, machine won't pick up accurate. There's something wrong. I pick up the machine, everything's good. I go to machine. And now my holes are off location. He was machining multiple holes in a mold, corpin holes. And as he machined, it was losing positional accuracy. I said, ah, there's no way, no way. So I go in there and I start doing the pickups. Everything's good. Then I fill up the tank and I notice it's kind of struggling filling up the tank. So now I drain the tank. I go around, I look at the sight glass. There's nothing in the reservoir. So every time he's filling up the work tank, he's emptying all of the water out of the reservoir. Well, what's that doing? That's removing all of the coolant, essentially, that's inside of that casting. And so what's happening is all that water is coming from the reservoir to the work tank. So that casting is now moving as he's machining because there's no water in the, in the reservoir to keep the machine itself cool. And that's how the Makinos are designed. 
Um, so it is important to take a look at your water reservoir and make sure you have the proper level of water. And then there's just general cleaning, right? Cleaning the work tank area, the table, the seal plate. The seal plate's a big one. So all wire EDM machines have a seal plate somehow to maintain that water, right, in the work tank. Um, Aquino's is designed to be a controlled leak, but you do need to clean it. And cleaning it is not that difficult. Basically, our machines come with a wash down hose. At the end of every job, I tell people just spray off that seal plate to keep that dirt and debris off of it right because if you, if you let that build up it's going to wear that seal plate and it's not going to work properly um, so it is probably the most overlooked item on wire EDM maintenance um, and if you don't clean that tank what happens is it will create a really hard scale uh, and especially that's very very critical to the seal plate because it's gonna uh, screw that uh, up real quick uh, there are acid cleaners that you can use I'm sure you're all aware of um, but you have to be real careful with a lot of those cleaners, right? You don't want to use something too aggressive and you don't want to use it on certain uh, parts of the machine. So this acid that you might use to clean the work tank, you certainly don't want to put that on your rollers because it'll destroy all your rollers. So this is what a clean tank looks like. Now the one on the right is obviously clean because it's a brand new machine. Uh, but the picture on the left there, that's uh, um, a used machine, but that's how you keep it clean. And this is what happens when you don't keep them clean. So you can see that seal plate especially, I, you know, I want to point that out, that that is really bad because that's going to prematurely wear that seal plate, and that's going to be a big expense to have that replaced. So it's very simple, at the end of the job, just spray that down with that wash down hose and you can prevent that pretty easily. So maintenance intervals. So what maintenance is, um, you know, typically short or long term, right? So short term would be like weekly maintenance. That's going to be your wire spool, energizer plates, uh, and your threading unit. So a lot of people don't don't do this, right? They don't. They think, oh, I'm not going to waste my time cleaning my threader every week. Well, if I'm already doing some kind of maintenance, right? So if I'm already doing my energizer plates, for example. So what I tell people to do, you already have that on an interval, whether it's every 100 hours or whether it's every 300 hours if you're using long life energizers, whatever. I put the uh, thread jet and the threader maintenance on that same interval. Why? Because if I do that, I know that the automatic wire threader is gonna work, which means I'm gonna achieve all of that unmanned machine time that I'm trying to get, right? Because the, there's nothing more frustrating than setting up a job, walking away, and then coming back and seeing that, well, it ran for an hour and then it went to my next thread and it missed the thread. And then it sat there for four hours because I wasn't checking on the machine. So doing that thread maintenance is critical. And then general cleaning, you know, that's, typical, that's just spraying down the work tank, wiping it down after every job. It may seem like a simple thing, but if I, when I complete a job, Spray, it, spray the work tank down with a wash down hose and just take a rag and wipe down the table. If you do that, you're gonna keep everything clean uh, and avoid a lot of issues. Uh, some some long-term items, you know, the wire guides. So I'm not gonna do that every week, um, but I wanna do that every month to make sure they're not getting clogged. Now, the rollers, same thing. I wanna take a look at the rollers, make sure they're not getting uh, too dirty. And just simply wipe them off and clean them and then your filters again that's going to really depend upon the filter type that you're using um, how much roughing you're doing versus skim cutting so those can really vary right uh, same thing with the resin that's going to vary based on the type of machining that you're doing and then general cleaning again i'm just going to continue doing that so what is my cost of maintenance because that's always the big that's always the big thing that I hear from customers. Well, we don't have time to do this maintenance. We don't have time for this. We don't have time. Well, there is a cost to it. I understand that. Um, your typical costs are going to be your cost of your consumable parts and the labors to do it. But there is more than that, right? Because it's, it's, it's not just doing that. If I don't do the maintenance, what am I losing in billable machining hours, right? Because if I don't do the maintenance properly, 
what is that really costing me as a company in terms of having my guy over there mess around with the machine all the time because I didn't take a very brief amount of time per month to make sure the machine is running correctly. So this is just a basic calculation of consumable cost. This is based on um, wire, uh, Makino U3 machine. Uh, and this is just putting in consumable uh, parts and costing and based on the intervals that we recommend uh, for, um, for maintenance. So with the wire, we're really looking at about, you know, five bucks an hour um, to do is a cost of our maintenance. So what is the schedule? So again, this is our recommendation for these, these you know, types of maintenance that we want to do and the intervals that we recommend for the most part um, to do them in. So we're really only looking at about an hour and a half a month, right, to maintain that machine and keep it functioning properly so that we can be more productive. And, and all these calculations here are based on 3,000 machining hours per year. I know that that could be more, that could be less, depends on how your shop runs, whether you have two shifts, three shifts, one shift, whatever, what type of work you do. Uh, but we just use that as a baseline uh, to, to come up with those numbers uh, based on our recommended intervals. So I contend that doing maintenance does not really cost you that much. I think that's an excuse because we all don't like doing maintenance because it's not a lot of fun. And I'm right there with you. It's not fun. So what has Makino done uh, in terms of their engineering on their machines um, to help with that? Well, Makino, and this is historically true, goes back to all of our machines. Uh, engineer the machines with maintenance in mind, understanding that it is a high maintenance machine. Uh, so we're going to change things to make sure um, that the maintenance is as easy as possible. And so what are some of those items that we put together? Well, simplified wire threading unit, and we'll talk about all these in a little bit detail here in a minute. Um, easier indexing of the uh, energizer plates. Uh, development of the long life energizers um, and minimize wire guide maintenance when you do your wire cleaning. Uh, filter air purge function that we put on the machine. And then there's a way to track all that maintenance on the control as well. And uh, so the threading unit. Well, it's a very simple threading unit. Um, this is our standard U3 machine here. Picture of that, U3 or U6. Um, consists of only one moving part and four components total. You can look at other threading units, competitors, uh, even if you look at our machine out here. This is Hyperdrive Extreme, has a few more parts to it, um, but still very minimal amount of maintenance. So you have your thread jet or your transfer jet up there. So the machine actually has two jets, right? So the upper one, all that upper jet is for is to get that wire through the upper head. That's it. That's all it's there for. And then the wire sensor right there that just lets the machine know. It's just a little optical sensor that lets the machine know that the wire, where the tip of the wire is. And then there's your needle cutter, which is the only moving part that will come out during the, the cut cycle like this to cut the wire with an annealer and then the thread jet is inside that lower head it's underneath the flush cup so that's it so it's very simple so to maintain that what do I really need to do on a, on a weekly basis or not even weekly this is the interval that you're gonna index the energizers all you really need to do is visually inspect the wire sensor if it's dirty you just got to clean it off with a little bit of alcohol and a q-tip uh, Inspect the anneal cutter and make sure that the contacts for the anneal cutter are not worn. If they're worn, you simply index them. Get four, in it, uh, four locations on the anneal cutter. Uh, and then clean the thread jet. Transfer jet really don't have to do much anything to it. Uh, because again, all that jet's really trying to do is get through that upper head. So it's very rare that you need to do anything on that, on this particular configuration of the machine. Um, the lower jet, you just unscrew it. The flush cup, unscrew the uh, 
the jet and just clean it with a little acid cleaner that comes with the machine. And that's it. So it doesn't take very much. If you do that, the machine will thread. Uh, next will be the energizer system. This is a toolless system. Uh, I believe this is a very, very good design. Um, I've run many different types of wire machines, many different brands, different types of Makinos. This is the best system. It's so easy. Uh, one full rotation, one click. Um, it eliminates the guesswork of indexing your energizer. And there is a common energizer plate used for the upper and the lower head. And then there's just a quick video here that shows how that works. I'm going to turn down that crazy music. Um, so this is just going to show us how that works. So again, it's just spring loaded. Turn it one click, put it back in and it's done quick and easy. Uh, the lower head works the same way. One click, it's indexed, you put it back in and you're done. So really nice system I believe uh, and you can take a look at that out here it's on the machine that's out, out in our uh, showroom as well. Same system. So Kind of in line with that, um, Makino along with SST has developed a long life energizer that improves the service life of those contacts. Like I said, normally uh, the original or standard contact is going to be about 60 to 100 hours um, per index. The long life can, can provide up to three to 400 hours. Um, it's a tungsten energizer so it will last much, much longer. So if you're doing heavy production, you're you know, putting major, major hours on the machine, uh, it's, it's a good alternative. And it does that, even, even though it costs more money, um, if, when you really do the calculation, it is more cost effective than the standard energizer. So Makino offers a selection of wire guide systems. So I talked about that earlier. Um, all these designs eliminate the need for wire alignment calibration when you're, when you're cleaning the guides. Well, how can that be? Well, V-guide's very simple, right? I mean, that's the traditional Makino guide. It's been around since the early 80s. Um, it's just a V and a flat, and it opens and closes, right? So since it opens and closes, well, it does a couple things for me because you're basically holding the wire like a, a V-block, and there's gaps, right? So it's pretty large gaps on the V that allows a lot of the debris to go by so it doesn't clog the guide, right? Um, but when I do cleaning, then all I have to do is open up the guide and I just use a toothbrush and some cleaner and I clean it. So I never have to physically move that guide, right? So if I don't move the guide, I don't need to do a <coughs> vertical alignment. Both of our round guide systems that we have, we have our traditional round, round guide that's there on the left. Um, that is what's on our standard U3, U6 machine. And then the Hyperdrive Extreme or HDE round guide is a little bit different. You can see there uh, the design of it's a little different. That's what's on the U3i that's in the showroom. So if you want to take a look at that, if you're not familiar with what that is, um, Mike's out there. He can show you what it is. Uh, very, very good system. Uh, that is on all of our higher end machines like the U3i, U6i, U32Js. Um, and our UP6 machine as well. But I can change both of those guides without needing to do a vertical alignment. Why is that? Both of them have a precision ground chamfer on them um, so that when you screw them in, that chamfer locates it in the head itself, right? So they're precision ground. We've done tests. Those repeat within um, five microns or two tenths, no problem. So if you're, gonna, if you're trying to do stuff where you're trying to hold a tenth or something, then I would do a, a vertical alignment. But for 99% of the work out there, there's no need to do a vertical alignment after you clean the guide. So there you go. That's what I just explained. Okay. Um, another nice feature on the Makino is the filters. Um, they're located in non-submerged cabinets, so they're up off of the... They're not down in the tank. You can see them there. They're on a shelf. 
<clears throat> they have quick disconnects on them. And there's an integrated uh, air purge. The air purge is nice because you just simply shut off the pumps. When you change the filters, you press and hold that button. Instead of water going through the filters, now air is going through it, so all that water comes out of the filter makes it easier to change. And here's a quick video that shows that. So you can see there's where the uh, filtration cabinet is. Again, this video is showing the U3i, which is the machine that's out there right there. Uh, you can take a look at how this works. Simply turn the pumps off, and then you just press and hurt hold that air purge button and it will blow out all of that water. Um, nice thing about that is if you've been around a long time like me, you know what it's like to pick up one of those inside out filters that's full of water, they're pretty heavy, and then you gotta flip them over and dump out all that water because you don't want to you don't want to ruin that water. You don't want to lose it, right? It's deionized water. Sometimes you get it all over the floor, you make a mess. This is nice because it just completely purges it. Uh, and all you need to do with that is, depending on your local code, throw it in the garbage or whatever you need to do with it. And then you're done. So nice, easy system to do that maintenance. Um, another thing is that on the Hyper-I, you're able to track uh, all of this, all the maintenance items that you have, right? So you can see on the right-hand side there, this is just setting up intervals on the preparation page as to when you want to do your maintenance. Now this maintenance uh, varies, obviously based on the type of work that you do, right? Uh, it's a very common question we get all the time. It's like, well, how long should this last? How long should this last? A lot of these consumables are gonna vary based on your usage. So you really kind of have to figure it out uh, at the beginning when you get the machine. But the nice thing is you can change this life and it will track it and it'll go from uh, green, yellow to red, letting you know I need to do my maintenance. Now, it's not gonna stop me from running the machine, but it's at least gonna put it in your face so that you can see it. And then, nice thing with the, the uh, in terms of being proactive, like for wire, for example, so that's a big one. So at the beginning, I talked about the wire spool. How is that really a maintenance, you know, proactive maintenance item? Well, every time I start a job, I go in and I draw it up, uh, the control will give me an estimate and it's going to track based on what I've set up on the preparation page my energizers, my resin, um, the filter, and the wire based on that usage. So it knows when it does the estimate of the job, hey, it's going to tell me whether or not I have enough wire left to complete that job. So like the example I said earlier, like if I set something up it's going to burn for 10 hours, I only had two hours worth of wire. When I go in here and I do the auto scale, it's going to show me right here, well, I don't have enough wire to complete the job. So now, what do I want to do? I'm going to go get a new spool of wire, simply write on the spool I take off how much is remaining, because I still want to use that wire at some point, right? But in order to track that, I can put it back on the machine at a later date when I have you know smaller jobs to do and just use that wire up. So it is a proactive maintenance item. So in summary, um, there are many items that, that must be addressed to keep a wire uh, running properly. Um, again, it's, it's a very high maintenance machine. There's no way around it. It just, it is, it is what it is. And that's what you need to do to make the machine productive. Um, you need to review and ensure that all that maintenance um, is being performed on your machine, right? And can't stress enough that for the best productivity and reliability of that machine, it is very critical to view this maintenance as a proactive preventative measure. That is how you're going to make money with a wire EDM machine. If you do not do the maintenance, you're going to be very annoyed with the wire machine um, because certain things are not going to work properly. So. That was my presentation on wiring and maintenance. Okay, so that was our presentation uh, on wire EDM maintenance. Um, right now, I'm available for any questions that you might have um, concerning uh, maintenance on wire EDM on a Makino or uh, 
any general questions about maintenance, I want to point out uh, on your screen there, there is a chat window and a Q&A window. Um, you can put any questions that you might have in either location, and uh, we can answer those questions for you right now. Okay, so it looks like we have a question in the chat here. Uh, okay, so Dan's asking, what would be the reason to select one guide over another? So that's actually a very good question. You know, why would I want a V guide or a round guide or a hyperdrive stream guide? Well, they all have different functionality uh, to them in terms of what their performance capability is. Um, you know, there, our standard round guide is our standard. It's on our, you know, our, our base model, our U3. Um, U6, um, it's a very efficient guide system, very simple to maintain. Uh, if you go to the Hyperdrive Extreme, uh, which is uh, got a little more functionality to it, but with that functionality comes some extra maintenance items as well. Um, the threading threader uh, works a little bit different in that uh, it will regenerate the tip of the wire, our standard uh, let me rephrase that. All of our guides, you can regenerate the tip, but it's more common on the hyperdrive extreme. That's why it has a little basket on the side. Uh, and then it's just really more, a little more uh, capability with the hyperdrive extreme round guide. The V guide is a traditional, traditional Makino guide. And that one um, is very good in production, like heavy production environments because of the v-guide design requires uh, less maintenance to keep that thing running properly so if you're doing heavy type production work the v-guide tends to uh, uh, really be a benefit and i have another question here uh how many times can the energizer plate be indexed before it needs to be replaced okay again that varies from machine to machine based on the design um, on our standard machine, you're going to get um, 16, I think, on one side, yep, and then 16 on the other side, and then you have to replace it. Um, on the V-Guide machine, um, it's a little different. That would be the same number on the bottom, but then on the upper head, um, it's a little smaller energizer, so you're only going to get uh, six indexes total out of the upper energizer on the V-Guide. The other two uh, machines, it is a common energizer top and bottom. And then Bill's got another question here. Uh, how often should the rollers be replaced? Um, it's said one to three years for the bearing. So... The other rollers, by and large, would not be replaced that often. Uh, the reason the bearing in the lower, uh, on the lower roller that's in the tank needs to be replaced every one to three years is because it is the one that's submerged in the water. So that's going to actually wear out faster. Uh, most of the rollers up top on your wire drive system, you're not really going to need to replace those unless you, as long as you keep them clean most of the hard rollers. There are a couple of softer rollers up there that are made of a little different material. And that's where I was talking about, you don't want to put acid on those because it's going to dry them out and cause them to prematurely wear. But our D roller, which is what's applying the tension uh, to the wire itself, you know, generally that thing, uh, you know, you may have to replace every five years or so uh, just to make sure because uh, it might start to slip as it wears. If it wears a groove in there, um, you're going to have to replace that roller. Now, I'll tell you, you can take that roller off, and if you have a lathe, you can very easily turn down the OD of that roller and get a little more life out of it. There's a limit to how much you can do there, because if you make it too small, then it's not going to function properly. Uh, but you can get away with that. That's a little cheat that you can do sometimes for that roller. Okay, got another question that came in here from Michael. How do you perform upper and lower alignment of the split V guides? Okay, so if you're going to change the guide, um, when you put that guide back in, if you look at that picture there that's in the screen right now, you can see one side is a flat, one side's a V, um, and they're basically screwed in to a 
fixture, essentially, that has two machined edges on it, and then there's a locating pin on the bottom of it. So you press those in there, and you indicate the front face of that up and down straight, and then you just tighten it up. Once you do that, then you do the vertical alignment um, with the uh, jig that comes with the machine uh, to get the upper and lower head uh, aligned. Uh, but for the V-Guide, it is a little more um, time consuming to align those guides. You just need to make sure they're indicated in straight, both on the upper and lower head. But the nice thing about that is once that's done, you never have to remove those guides. So, you know, it's very simple, fast uh, to do it if you do it a lot. If you don't do it a lot, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but you never have to take them out to clean them. The only time you would have to do a, a you know, re-indicate those in is if you crash the machine uh, or you change the guides themselves. Okay. And we got another question here. Uh, Josh is saying uh, the new U6 came with one to two micron filters. Sounds like it's just fine to use a three to five micron filter. And, you, and he's working in a mold shop. Yeah, absolutely. You can use a three to five micron filter. Uh, that's fine. Uh, there is another uh, one micron filter. That's your jet filter. Um, so what that's going to do is going to filter out that uh, water even more uh, to help minimize the maintenance that you need to do on your thread jet. But three to five micron filter is perfectly fine uh, to use. Um, that's generally what I recommend. That's generally what, what I use in the shop. Um, you know, the one to two works great, but just means you're going to have to change it more often and they're can be a little pricey. I don't like to see customers go above the five micron. Uh, only if you're doing aluminum, if you're doing a lot of aluminum, you're going to need to go to a higher micron filter because the particle itself is bigger and it's going to clog up that filter instantly if you're using a, a low micron filter. So that's the only time I'd recommend, recommend a higher micron filter above five. So, okay, it looks like we got another couple more came in here uh shane uh would you need to clean the refill reservoir behind an m makino u6 as well uh so i'm assuming you're talking about the work tank itself the work reservoir not the work tank but the reservoir um so there is a uh a, a maintenance interval to clean that tank uh, that is recommended by the factory. Um, but I'll be honest with you, if you use a lower micron filter, like a three to five micron filter, and you change your filters regularly, you don't allow them to get blown out or you're just blowing dirty water back into the tank, um, you don't need to clean it as often as they tell you to, right? Uh, the reason is, the only reason you need to clean it is that you don't want to get buildup in that tank to where it's going to interfere with the pumps that are in the uh, the reservoir, right? To be able to fill the fill pump that goes into the work tank, uh, you just need to make sure that's clean. Um, so generally speaking, I tell customers really about every three years to drain that and wipe it down and make sure it's clean. Don't really need to do it any more than that. And then going back to the V-guides, another question, what would be the approximate lifetime of a set of V-guides? Well, those V-guides are guaranteed for 12,000 hours. So very, very long time uh, that you can use those guides. Uh, that's assuming that you take care of them properly, meaning that you clean them when you're supposed to clean them. Uh, and you're not doing things like cutting uh, you know, a 35 degree taper with a V guide that is not recommended. If you do that, you're going to prematurely wear the guide. It's designed for straight cutting and up to a 15 degree taper. Anything above that, you're going to wear that guide out uh, much, much faster. Um, so that would be the standard uh, life on that. And then Dan has another question about if uh, 3000 production hours Demands about one and a half times per one and a half hours a month in your experience. Okay. Asking in my experience where the competitors stand on maintenance hours um, for the same machine. 
generally speaking, our customers are going to have at least double or triple the maintenance that we have on the Makino. And the main reason for that is if you look at some other machines, you're going to see a lot more moving parts and especially on the upper head and the threading mechanism. So it's going to vary from, you know, manufacturer to manufacturer. Some of them are, are really close to ours, but maybe just a little bit more maintenance. Then you're going to have some, it's going to be a whole lot more maintenance because there's a lot more moving parts up there. So it's really hard to say, um, but Makino, I can honestly say, uh, is probably the, the lowest amount of maintenance I've ever done on a machine. I've run other competitors' machines. I'm not going to say which ones, but I have run every major competitor um, of Makino's. I've run in the shop, including Makino. I've run in the shop. And uh, Makino's are the easiest to keep uh, up and running in terms of maintenance. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, for taking their time today uh, to spend with us. I'm sorry it went a little long. Um, we try to keep these down to a half an hour. Uh, but, uh, you know, maintenance is a very important thing for YREBM, so I don't mind taking a little extra time. And again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. And if anybody has any questions, uh, please uh, contact myself uh, or Mark Bay and we can answer those questions for you. So everyone have a great day. Thanks.